spaceship suffers damage from an event that wakes the crew from a cryogenic sleep. With the spacecraft damaged, they must work together to survive the long journey to their new home. The crew is shaken out of their sleep. The sleep pods are taking damage. The crew scrambles to safety. Things settle down. They make assessments. Bad news. They're still a year away from their destination with only a six week supply of food and water. Allow me to pause and rant. This crew is very attractive. Apparently in the future, everyone is attractive. Not one ugly person in sight. I guess there must have been some sort of war between the pretties and the uglies, and the pretties wiped them out. I wouldn't have expected this, given the pent-up rage that the uglies have carried their entire lives. My guess is that the uglies started fighting amongst themselves, and the pretties slid right in and took them out. But I digress. All of the top-level leadership died during whatever caused the damage. This leaves us with three surviving lieutenants in charge. The one in the middle, Garnett, assumes leadership. She gives a speech that couldn't inspire a starving man to take a bite out of a juicy hamburger. The other two, Bryce and Lane, don't take kindly to Garnett jumping the leadership line. All is not lost. We have nerves aboard. A little advice. If you're going on a trip, make sure you got a good supply of nerves. I haven't figured out whether to call them nerd one, nerd two, or black nerd, white nerd, or nerd man, nerd woman. I'll figure it out. By the way, nothing says nerd like nerd glasses, huh? Nerd one thinks he can grow food with the soil he snuck onto the spacecraft. Nerds rule. Ripple effects from the initial damage begin. The software that controls the oxygen levels is malfunctioning. They bring in Jasper, the software expert. The problem is, this isn't the real Jasper. It's an imposter. He stole the real Jasper spot on the spacecraft. Arrest him. Luckily, woman nerd solves the oxygen problem in a matter of seconds. Nerds rule. Sorry, another rant. This nerd fixes the code within a couple of minutes. I used to be a software engineer myself, and I was very good at my job. Let me tell you, if there was ever a crisis where I had two minutes to fix code, I would turn to everyone and tell them to get right with their gods because we're all going to die. Code cannot be fixed in a couple of minutes. It will take you over two minutes just to find the code that needs to be addressed. But I digress. Jasper the imposter is being held prisoner. He's visited by Garnett for interrogation. He turns the tables on her. He tells her that she looks very similar to someone he saw in a bar raising hell like a mungo. In the next scene, old Jasper is found dead with his throat slashed. Garnett, was that you? The lieutenants, Lane and Spence, inspect the spacecraft damage. Lane takes a hit to the head. He goes to see Dr. Kabir. She's been performing on zero hours of sleep since the event. She is about to tap out. But before that, she tells the woman nerd what I've been thinking the entire show. Shut the hell up with all that nerd talk. The male nerd's attempt to grow food gets sabotaged. Someone put a knife in his tubes and caused the water to erupt out of the tubes. Valuable wasted water. Not a good look, nerd. The security guy determines that the knife is the same one that killed Jasper. Hmm. Meanwhile, Lieutenant Bryce finds evidence that the spacecraft was indeed sabotaged. So here's where we are. Who killed Jasper? Who sabotaged the nerd's project? Who sabotaged the spacecraft? As if things weren't bad enough, they discover that they're drifting towards an asteroid. At this point, I'm team asteroid. They don't have enough engine power to change course. They come up with two plans. Plan A, have Lieutenant Bryce demand a shuttle to yank the ship in a different direction. Plan B, set off a shit bomb. Yes, a shit bomb within the spacecraft, letting the impact shift the course of the ship. 
Guess who came up with the idea for the shit bomb? Nerds rule. They execute plan B. It works. Woman nerd notices that it's not an asteroid, but a comet. After another science lesson, we learned that water can be harvested from a comet. Where would we be without the nerds? Nerds rule. Lieutenant Bryce successfully drills the comet for enough water to take care of everyone for the duration of the mission. Disaster averted. Meanwhile, the doc, who has gone 364 hours without sleep, is getting high on own supply. And just when the lieutenants are all coming together as one unit, Lieutenant Lane acquires a video left behind by Jasper. It shows Garnett slicing a dude's throat in a bar fight. The same kind of throat slash that killed Jasper. Garnett, was that you? Have you ever watched the show in five minutes and you're thinking, man, this is going to be bad? Well, that's the feeling I had about this show. Here's the main problem with it. You can be a drama with a little bit of comedy, or you can be a comedy with a little bit of drama. But you can't split the baby. You can't be half and half. Even worse, this show is trying to be a mystery, drama, action, suspense, and comedy show. That's impossible. This show has pretty people, but it's also pretty bad, and I am pretty out on it. 